Um, I guess um, mania is, is kind of the, is the high, where depression is the low, so they're two, but I would say that sometimes the two come at once, so you kind of have, you feel really ecstatic and really excited and feel like you can do anything, but then obviously, like you said, the low, the low points, you feel paranoid, you feel like everyone's talking about you, you know, you can get to thinking that people are trying to hurt you or, you know, um, you, you kind of, and you don't, you know, you don't sleep, so you're awake for hours on end, and you kind of, it's, it's this huge sort of explosion of emotions, and no one really understands what's going on, and you're upset about everything, but you're also excited about everything, and, you know, this is great, but that's, you know, it, it's, it's like an overload, it's where your brain is just so sensitive to everything, like, touch, smell, anything like that, it's like, like exaggerated so you know it's like everything around you is so loud and so slow and and you're moving so fast so it can get quite frightening and and it you know I, I remember a period where I hadn't slept for two weeks literally 14 days straight not sleeping and uh, waking up in places not knowing how you got there you know it's really really you know confusing and and you know being surrounded by by drugs and other sort of risky things like that and not knowing whether you've been involved is also sort of, you know, and sort of a lot of people don't realise that there's a problem, a lot of people just think you're on something, you know, or that, you know, you know, some kind of bad trip or something, so that that's always, that's always bad. It's always bad when people don't understand, but yeah, so I would say that the low points of mania are also as well, that, that you know that afterwards after all this excitement and after all this um, being centre of attention and being fun, you're going to crash down. And you kind of anticipate it and then as it comes it gets worse and worse and then things start to slow down and then, you know, it, you, you begin to to feel more paranoid than you did before. So it's, it's, it's a real, um, like it's a real train wreck of emotions and and it's difficult as well as as well as thrilling and exciting and it can be quite hard for a bipolar person to um to get well after that because you know being well and rested and stable seems so boring in comparison but it's nice not to have the sort of the fear and the and the paranoia you know a lot I remember I thought that my parents were going to going to kill me you know and I think that's not something that I love my parents you know so it's it's quite a a difficult, a difficult thing for others around you to cope with as well because um, they feel like they're losing you as a person. So I would, that's what I would say is the the low points of the mania, of mania. Here, I go to see a group of people called the uh, Early Interventions in Psychosis Team. They um, they vary on how well they provide care. And they have a crisis team as well, so if you're really in crisis, you can call. But it's, I think, the best sort of help I get is from my counsellors and from. I also get men. Uh, I also receive mentoring at uni. So, um, but that's the best. The best thing for someone suffering with any kind of mental illness that that has any kind of sort of depressive or 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 anxiety sort of factors to it is to actually talk through it and not just to keep it in and just to try and get well on your own, you know? So so here you kind of have, um, I have a counsellor here, I have a counsellor back home in Bristol, I don't know. but here in this area I would say that it's probably not as effective as it is back in Bristol, I'd say that, but the Canterbury um, EIP team are, are a bit, a bit lapsed. But only because I think they've got so much to deal with, I think, you know, I think Sometimes they come off really well, you know, when you're, when you're, um, because obviously I'm, I, I recovering from anorexia as well, so when I was starving once and couldn't afford food, you know, they bought food parcels and, you know, you don't want to take it, but where, practically they come in, come into play really well, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult one, because, and also, sometimes there's not much that they can do for you, and they try to keep you out of hospital, because really they don't need, you don't need someone with a mental illness taking up beds, whether it's sort of physically ill people. Not that, you know, bipolar disorder and other, other mental illnesses don't make you feel physically ill, because they do, but I can understand why they want to keep you out of hospital, so. But, yeah, I, I have 
been through quite a lot of people. Obviously, I had to go see like a, psychi a psychiatrist and then you get diagnosed. But um, like mental health clinics and hospitals are always incredibly dreary places, and you kind of think, surely you'd want to go against that. You know, surely you, you would want to make it a lot more cheery for the person because. I think part of the fear itself is the treatment, you know. I remember just feeling like um, I didn't want treatment because I didn't feel like it was a problem. I did when I got ill and I got depressed, you know. Not being able to get off, up off the floor for days on end is a problem, you know, because you're just so, so down. But, um, but sometimes you kind of wallow in it and so yeah I think their job is incredibly difficult so but yeah there's, there's there's a lot of avenues that you can go down and there's always there's always help so you know on that side of things I think they're pretty you know on the ball really but but yeah it's quite yeah that, that's probably about about all that's offered there's support groups and things like that but sometimes if you don't want to air your dirty laundry with lots of people you know it's kind of it's not something that you want to talk about to people you've never met before, but then you kind of have to, you don't need to get through these things, but yeah, so. <laughs>
there's nothing you can do health wise to stop it either. You know, you can't you can't prevent it. You know, and often there are triggers, and this is what we I think people need to learn is that you know. Um, understanding of people with these problems is, is, is key, it's paramount to, to, to getting by and living in today's society because if you think about it, I, I, I don't know, but it's some incredible st statistic um, an amount of people who suffer from bipolar in the UK and, and across the world, it's a, it affects, I don't know, it's like one in three people, I think, you know, indirectly or directly, you know. So I think things like this definitely need to be talked about and definitely need to be expressed and understood. So, you know, in schools, anything, you know. I think it's in the same way that they talk about driving safety or they talk about, you know, um, stranger danger, all that kind of thing. I think there should be some kind of crash course in, in knowing how to talk to someone who's in, in um, mental distress. So.